Welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So today we're back to exploring the world of lasers and infrared light, radio waves, electromagnetic stuff. And yes, that is the scientific term for it, electromagnetic stuff. Very professional. So in case you're not familiar with it, this is the new tool added to Universe Sandbox. It shoots a laser with a set power and wavelength and you can determine all these different stats over here. You can change them, you can play with them, and you can see the effect of the ray on the Earth, which is instant destruction. I didn't think that would happen. Is that Earth right there? I accidentally destroyed life as we know it. That is the power of this game. That's like a monumental fuck up right there. All right, we're back. Nothing happened. You saw nothing. So the laser that just destroyed Earth in a matter of seconds has a radius of one meter, so about an arm's length, and a power of three pentawatt with a wavelength of 600 nanometers. So 600 nanometers is higher than ultraviolet light. So this is essentially an ultraviolet laser with a length of one meter. So I'm just gonna hit Japan straight off the bat, okay? I'm gonna find Akihabara and destroy the anime titties right here in a matter of seconds. We are at, we are at a time scale of one second per second. So this is real time. This is as real as it gets. Let's see what happens. That's the laser. We are at a one-to-one -one time scale. So I'm guessing uh, the temperature should be, yep, it's like 8 billion degrees already. The mass is decreasing rapidly. It's like 74 moons. Let's go to Earth's. So it's now only 0.8 times the size of the Earth. It, it starts at one. So it's losing mass. I'm guessing it's turning into energy. The surface temperature, it's 87,000 degrees. And the maximum temperature possible is like, I can't even tell what this is, it's like 282 million degrees. Now that's the Earth, just a speck in the middle of nothing. Let's go to Mars. Can I hit it from here? <laughs> I wonder if I can. Don't mind me, I'm just playing laser tag from up here. Now, Mars is very similar to Earth. I think it only has a fraction of its mass and gravity. I want to decrease this a little bit. I want to see... I think the problem is the power. So let's go with something less extreme. Let's just go to kilowatts. Can I go to a million kilowatts? Can a laser with one million kilowatts destroy Mars? It cannot destroy Mars, but it can certainly leave a scar on its face. Oh yeah, so you could certainly use this as a weapon from outer space. Like if you had a satellite, you can certainly use this as a weapon to destroy like cities. It has a one meter radius, like this is pinpoint accuracy. It could be a very accurate weapon, like look at that. Now infrared light is 700 nanometers and ultraviolet light is like 400 nanometers. This is, I think I said before it was like ultraviolet, it's not, sorry, it's infrared light. Actually, let's go to ultraviolet. So that's ultraviolet light, it has a similar effect, I feel like it's less damaging. Maybe the shorter the wavelength, the less damage it does. And in the meantime, I'm pretty sure the Earth is gone. <laughs> now, here's an interesting experiment. What if we had a massive microwave? So that's a that's a microwave. It doesn't do anything, essentially. It doesn't do anything. Well, it does a little bit. I guess the power, it's like one gigawatt. The radius is one meter. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to change the power. I'm just going to change the radius of the laser. So it's going to simulate a massive microwave. Let's go with a thousand kilometers. That's the size of India. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just gonna hit India with a microwave. Like an actual microwave laser. Not a, not a massive microwave. That would be dumb. Alright, let's see what happens here. Not a lot happening there. The Amazon rainforest seems to be fine. Just microwaving all the food in North America. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay is gonna be thankful for that. Finally, some good fucking food. Now, maybe what we need is a lot more uh, power here. What will this do? Now, this is the most powerful thing we can do. This is like the highest measurement. Oh my God, yep. <laughs> so essentially a microwave can definitely destroy the earth. If it's 1000 kilometers in size, like look at this, it instantly evaporated the ocean. Oh my God, I'm going into the abstract plane. Holy shit, that made my skin crawl. What the hell, dude? It shriveled up like a boomer in the sun. Can Venus be destroyed in the same way? Yes, it certainly can. Look at that. Who would have thought a microwave would be this powerful? Saturn is a behemoth. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm, I'm, I was wrong. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I'm not sure if I can do this, if I can destroy Saturn with a microwave, but I certainly can. Now, the real question is, can it destroy the whole solar system? 
Now here we have the whole solar system aligned. Every single piece of mass in the solar system is right here. And we're gonna shoot that microwave and see whether or not it can destroy absolutely everything here. Every single thing will be destroyed. Maybe, I'm not sure. We are aligned. We have the microwave laser, 1000 kilometers in size. Let's do this. All right, it's burning through the smaller moons, I guess. All right, it's certainly burning through some planets. That's Pluto right there. Pluto is gone. The Earth is gone. Oh my God, Jupiter is gone. <laughs> oh my Jesus Christ. Saturn took a while, but it's gone. Jupiter, is this Jupiter? Yeah, this is Jupiter. Oh, God damn it. Now, can it destroy the sun? It cannot destroy the sun. Holy shit. Now, I kind of want to test something called gamma rays. Now, gamma rays are kind of interesting. You can detect them with satellites and stuff. I'm very professional. <laughs> I don't know shit about what I'm talking about. All I know is that I read that neutron stars and pulsars have these like rays that come out of them. So we have a neutron star. It's spinning very fast. It's called the pulsar. And from its poles, it has like freaking rays coming out of it. What would happen if we just wandered into one of those rays? Well, that's what we're gonna simulate right now. Now, a gamma ray has a wavelength of 0.02 nanometers. So let's go to nanometers, 0.02. What is the breadth of one of those rays coming from a pulsar? Let's just search this real quick. So the rays are called gamma ray burst. It comes out of the pulsars, it comes out of the neutron stars. They are the brightest electromagnetic events known to occur in the universe. <laughs> Holy shit. Bursts can last from 10 milliseconds to several hours. And most of them seem to originate from the merger of two neutron stars. So binary neutron stars. It seems like a gamma ray burst that is powerful enough to destroy Earth only occurs like once every 10,000 years. And only a small percentage of these would be beamed towards Earth. So it could happen, but it's very unlikely it seems uh it seems like the closest observed gamma ray burst was detected on march 2014 and it was 40 megaparsecs away it says a gamma ray burst in the milky way pointing directly towards earth could cause a mass extension event well there's the answer and we're gonna watch that as it plays out right here apparently a gamma ray burst can release more energy in 10 seconds than the sun will emit in its entire 10 billion year lifetime what the <laughs> that is insane i'm not sure how what the radius would be but i think it's safe to assume that it's certainly at least a million kilometers it cannot be less than that i mean the closest one detected is like 40 megaparsecs away it's gotta be huge right so let's go with 10 million kilometers. It's just dumb. We have the wavelength, it's correct. We have the power. We have the radius of a gamma ray burst. Well, it seems like not even this game can simulate something that big. Every time I go like one, like 10,000 kilometers. Oh, it does work. Look at that. Oh, it does work. 10,000 kilometers does work. Now, hold on. What if I add another zero here? Sometimes it breaks for some reason. Oh my god, it, it does work. <laughs> I think we have everything correct. I think the radius would be a lot more than a million kilometers. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's a million kilometers right there. Does it work? Yes, it does. <laughs> one million kilometers. Maybe even a light year in size, in radius. One light year, can we do that? Holy shit. <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> That makes no sense. Oh my god. Now, what if I just do this? Will this destroy every single planet in its way? Will it destroy the sun? I don't think the game knows how to render this even. It, it's not destroying Uranus for some reason. I don't know if that tells us something about the ray or about you. I'm not sure. It's certainly losing mass, I think. You can see all the gases being expelled. I think I might have broke the game. Oh yes, it definitely broke the game. That was the problem. It was broken. It might not be capable of destroying the sun. I don't know how the physics work there. Maybe it's just powering the sun. Who the hell knows? Well, it seems to work at one Milky Way in terms of size. It seems like it is working, but as soon as you get to the sun, it doesn't do anything. 
doesn't seem to be able to do anything. There's the earth. How many earths can it destroy though? Let's just place a ton of earths here, see what happens. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the gamma ray is like impossible to withstand. It, it, did you see that? How fast all those objects just lost their mass? It's freaking insane. Look at that. It, like shrinks instantly. Look at that. Am I just breaking the game? These are all earths. All earths. It can destroy multiple earths. They're changing position because of the chart. That's how the solar system ends. After just wandering into a gamma ray burst. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.